the 1990 Mazda MX-5 Mio. Oh yeah. My father spent three years restoring this car. It is his love. It is his passion. It is his fault he didn't lock the garage. Don't you remember how insane my dad went when I broke my retainer? Come on, that was a little piece of plastic used in the yard. Look, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. No, Ferris, I'm putting my foot down. How about we rent a nice Cadillac? My treat! A nice stretch off with a TV and a bar? Come on, live a little. Coming up on this week's episode of Aftershock. Sam has a Bob Ross painting competition. Nicole tests students' geography skills. And Mia catches us up with all things sports. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Alex Lamb. And I'm Nicole Borman, and Aftershock starts now. We love being students in journalism. Being able to tell uplifting stories or make funny entertainment segments really allow us to put a smile on the face of our audience. Speaking of smiles on faces, Alex got to know one coffee shop who makes spreading positivity their message. It's just a normal drive through But why are there cars lined up down the street? I was introduced here about three months ago by my friends and I just love the environment. Cali Coffee, a coffee shop opened shortly before the pandemic, just seemingly sells ordinary beverages. But they offer one secret menu item, kindness. But our whole thing here really is just making people's days better, like, and just doing our part to just put a smile on people's faces. And that's great, and I love it. It really is a natural feeling thing, where it's like, it's not like a corporation telling you like, oh, do this, do that. It's just, you know, some nice people making coffee and putting smiles on people's faces. Like, that's really what we're all about here. Instead of just simply taking your order, the Cali Coffee mission is to establish a connection and have a conversation with customers. Nico, a relatively new worker, fell in love with the Cali Coffee environment as a customer. Yeah, I would um, come like maybe two or three times a day. <laughs> it was a problem, but I was just like, this place rocks. So I would just always be coming up. Nico got his day brightened by the staff at Cali Coffee, and now he can brighten the day of others. I just love the environment, but it's like, it's more than that. It's like, they go out of their way to make people's days better. And that's just really cool to me. And while it may just be an ordinary drive through the impact of positivity on its customers is unmatched. Alex Land, CB TV. Picture this, the year is 1880. At this point, black and white photography had already existed for about 40 years, so the original awe that was associated with this new medium had already kind of faded. Plus, after looking at rich, vibrant paintings from that era, people would look at desaturated prints and just think, there's something missing. Due to past limitations in technology, people were restricted to only capturing black and white photographs. In the 1940s, however, Europeans began introducing colors to these images in a very hands-on manner, by grabbing pigments and hand-painting them. Artists would sit down with a single photo for hours, blending colors to try and perfectly match the original hues in the image. Sadly, this revolutionary process was actually pretty uncommon, and for good reason, too. It was a delicate, time-consuming, and very expensive process that included taking a photo, developing it, printing it, and cautiously bringing it to life with a mixture of dyes and paints. Because of this, very few people could actually afford them, which made these hand-painted prints a highly coveted good. Despite this technique being discovered in Europe, the real masters of this trade were the Japanese. They had been experimenting with soft, delicate watercolors for hundreds of years, making them the best candidates for reviving these lifeless prints. 
Because of their sophisticated knack for blending and color matching, they were quickly recognized as the best, bringing them lots of business, particularly from tourists. Photography shops littered Japanese streets, which brought a new artistic culture to not just the main cities, but other parts of the world as well. Even though this craft became pretty much obsolete after the creation of colored photography in the 1890s, one thing is for certain. Nothing compares to seeing each carefully colorized work of art, each shade coalescing together to replicate the tenderness and poise ingrained in each image. Now that's something you won't get from Photoshop. So next time you see a colorized image, just don't let yourself take its chromaticity for granted. I'm Isabella Chiappini, CB TV. Knock, knock. Ah, Jason, come in. So word around the office is, you've got a couple ideas for new products. Yes, sir. Well, lay them on me. With pleasure. The Omnisole. It has everything you need in the convenient little bundle. Look how quickly I was able to draw this perfect picture of a dog. I don't really know about that one. Try another idea though. All right, all right. Um, let's see what else. Introducing the Wushi Lift. It's a toy that's like a boomerang, but instead of going 180 degrees, it just goes 90. Like watch. That's coming out of your paycheck. <laughs> um, we can discuss that later. Aha! This is a technological marvel. See, it's a touchscreen. That's just an iPhone. We're not legally allowed to sell those. All right, all right. So I know you're gonna love this one. Jason, just stop. All these products are bad. Why can't you just come up with one good idea? Ugh. I'm sorry, sir. It's just, it's been so stressful lately and I really want to make a great product for this company. Sorry. Wait, I'll give you one more chance. Thank you, sir. You won't regret it. Um, so imagine if corn was like a brick. Get out. After numerous weeks of mandating masks, Broward County Public Schools has finally decided to do away with these guidelines, causing individuals to worry about COVID-19. In the midst of this, the flu has once again risen and found a way to creep around the corner. Seen at other big campuses around the state, such as Florida State University, the illness has overtaken lives of many. And I just felt very achy and I couldn't get out of bed. And I never really feel like that when I'm sick, so I knew something was wrong. So I called my mom and she suggested going to get flu tested. This wildfire of a flu has spread to the point where some students have taken further measures to avoid being enveloped. Everyone was getting the flu, so um, I decided to come home because of my health. I obviously did not want to catch the flu, um, and I just thought that it was better. And I personally had um, the benefit of being able to do my classes on Zoom, so I came home for a little while to kind of avoid getting the flu. This hard-hitting season could be in response to the transition back to normalcy. Most teachers don't require masks and most kids don't wear masks in class. I feel like only a few kids wear masks. It just depends. Considering the fact that there's a shortage of flu medication, it worsens the circumstances of the sickness compared to other years. And there's only a shortage of Tamiflu because I think those pharmacies up there are just overwhelmed, like CVS and Walgreens just can't keep up with the demand. Keeping this in mind, people need to take the proper precautions to remain safe throughout this period. I'm Matthew Maycutt, CB TV. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Samantha Perez, and I challenged my friends to follow Bob Ross' tutorial. But the catch is, they can only listen to the audio. Let's see how they did. Okay. So let's start out and have him run all the colors across the screen. Bro, it's just on the screen how he's looking on the colors. I can't hear it. A very small amount. Indian yellow? Bright red. Red? Be careful with the bright red. Let's use a lavender color. We'll just what? mix it here. I'll We're use on a red. Little... There we 
we go. Do we need to do this? Okay. <laughs> I use a the old brush against a, a paper because we don't make mistakes. the ocean. There. No, he said cloud. Now, no, with the lavender, that's probably what he's brush. doing. So, put the other thing in. That thing is farthest away in first. This is called a Sherman fox squirrel. And he's as big, yeah, he's as big as a squirrel. Wait, I'm starting to think that it's not the ocean. We've wasted all of our time up here in the sky. Let's let's put a little something. I'll just take a little of that lavender it since it's the going bottom? so nice. Find my knife. A mountain. Just take that same lavender color. I can't put do a hair, mountain in the middle of the ocean. And that's good. I don't enough. know what I have. Um, Plus, it, I don't I don't I want have much back not here. Not with that illusion of distance. So you want reflections to be? Pull them down. Reflections. It's the lake video with the mountain See, and the go lake gently and across. And we have instant I'm not a Bob Ross fan, so I don't know. A little white. So it's mine like red it? in it. No. Just a little. Just to finish up the little painting. Finish. Finish. Just to give you an idea. So see. Um, comment down below, whose is better, mine. Looks like our listening skills need a little bit of work. I'm Samantha Perez, CB TV. Here's Mia with sports. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Mia Batista, and on this week, Lightning Athletics, Morgan's catching us up on the Bengals and Jets game. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Morgan, and not even halfway through the NFL football season, history was made. On October 31st, the New York Jets played against the Cincinnati Bengals. However, the Jets quarterback, Zach Wilson, is recovering from a knee injury, so their backup QB, Mike White, stood in for him. In the opening drive, White threw a touchdown run to Michael Carter, which gave the Jets a 7-0 lead, which also happened to be the first time this season that the Jets scored within the first quarter. Nonetheless, during the second and third quarter, the Bengals were able to creep ahead, making the score 31-20. Moving into the fourth quarter, White threw two touchdowns, and with three minutes and 45 seconds remaining, the Jets decided to go for the two-point conversion with a trick play, which involved Mike White throwing the ball to Jamison Crowder, who then threw it back to White while he was in the end zone. That exciting play led the Jets to victory, with the ending score being 34-31. And it was that play that secured Mike White a spot next to Cam Newton in the NFL Hall of Fame for throwing for more than 400 yards. Was it just Mike White's lucky day or will he continue the streak going forward and possibly replace Zach Wilson in the future? Who knows? I'm Morgan Haggett, CBTV Sports. That's it for this week's Lightning Athletics. I'm Mia Batista, CBTV Sports. Hey Alex! If I asked you to name five different countries, would you be able to? I don't know. We haven't learned that since like seventh grade. Well, I went around school testing our students' geography skills. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Nicole Borman. In honor of our school's International Day, we're going to be testing you guys on what countries you know. Okay, so where is Greece? We're here. So you actually have to point to it? <laughs> Bro, this map is so bad. Greece. Greece. Oh. That's, that's like Norway. Where is Costa Rica? Costa Rica? Right there. Um, where is France? Next to Greece. <laughs> I don't think that's correct. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> France? France! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> 
Where? <laughs> um, where is Greenland? I think that's Iceland. Wait, isn't that Iceland? <laughs> Aren't they the same thing? It's in this section. Nobody ever told me geography. Okay, the next one is Australia. All I know is they're in like a different time zone. Guys, this is so embarrassing. Okay, now just name as many as you know. Okay. One eternity later. Uganda, Rwanda. That's it, I think. That's it. Yes, you guys are going to have to brush up on your geography skills. I'm Nicole Borman, TV, TV. Well, that's all for this week's episode of Aftershock. If you want to watch previous episodes, check out our YouTube at Cyberspace CBTV and follow all of our social medias. I'm Alex Lamb. And I'm Nicole Borman. Thanks for watching.